Yes, Fairview area implementation. Um, it is late, but we do want to continue to make progress. Yeah. So Dave and team are going to go through some of the initial sort of setup as they normally do. And then I think we should all, um, if we've got some comments, we want to get people started thinking on. Yeah. You know, what I guess I'm thinking is we're not going to do a lot of debating tonight. But we ought, to, we ought to hear from everybody. Let's start making some progress, give each other something to think about yeah. in the interim, and then we'll ask for some input as well. Okay? Mm -hmm. Dave and team, it's Dave Stan team. Popovich, Community <laughs> Development Director. Thank you, Mayor Piedmont. Good evening again, Mayor Council and residents. Uh, as the Mayor and Overby talking about the Fairview area implementation uh, tonight, a little background on boundaries and uh, land use recommendation reviews. So the Village Council uh, set up a long range uh, plan 18 priority action, action items will be completed in the next 20 month period through May of 2025. Uh, this includes a comprehensive plan update and these uh, related action items. Included is the Fairview area plan implementation that we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, the Fairview focus area plan implementation includes uh, the Village Council identified these areas, defining the project area, amendments, potential amendments to the zoning order, zoning map, financing and financial policies, business attraction, streetscape, and some redevelopment. This evening, we're gonna be talking about the first two items on the list here, defining the project area, and then uh, clarifying and confirming land use recommendations from the 2017 comprehensive plan, uh, which could lead to text amendments and zoning ordinance map amendments. Uh, because these two topics are related, we'll be talking about these two items tonight. After my presentation, we can go into a little bit of council discussion and resident discussion uh, as well. When we talk about plan implementation, we start off with the comprehensive plan. Uh, that was completed in 2017. It included public input, plan commission review, and recommendation of the comprehensive plan, and then ultimately village council approval in 2017. Uh, the next step in this process would be to develop a zoning framework. Uh, this would be similar to what we did in the downtown a few years ago after the count plan was approved. Uh, this will be completed by the Village Council throughout the end of this year. And after that, staff could proceed with then uh, zoning ordinance text amendments and map amendments as identified in the zoning framework. Uh, this would involve neighborhood meetings, uh, again, plan commission review and recommendation, and ultimately a Village Council approval. So tonight, uh, what we wanted to start talking about was uh, some policy direction using the existing comprehensive plan, land use recommendations, uh, to start as a guide here tonight we're looking to talk about establishing boundaries confirming those land use recommendations uh, looking to have some information brought up so through these discussions the next couple weeks staff would have enough information to begin working on a zoning framework that can be reviewed by the council in their future or alternatively um, you know these recommendations were developed in 17 obviously a lot has changed in the world if, if council believes that they don't agree with the recommendations for 2017 the village can begin, renew, begin anew and uh, relook at the Fairview, cons Fairview focus area as part of our comprehensive plan update that we're going to be beginning soon. <clears throat> so, in the uh, packet tonight, we included a, an excerpt of six pages of the Fairview focus area. You can see it, it, it includes mapping, it includes key <coughs> concepts, texts, uh, it includes a map here in the middle about catalyst sites. The comp plan, for those that aren't familiar, identifies catalyst sites as those parcels where a redevelopment would have a positive catalytic impact on the surrounding areas. Catalyst sites are, are throughout the comprehensive plan uh, in each of the seven focus areas uh, within the comprehensive plan itself. When we talk about boundaries in the comprehensive plan, the comprehensive plan uses words to describe the boundaries of the comprehensive in the, the say, focus area. It includes a lot of different maps uh, and text in there. But it's principally a text description of the boundary. And so on the north, it talks about Howard Park to the north. On the east, the boundaries of that is the village limits. And on the south are the residential neighbors and, and, and along the west as well. But it doesn't really define an actual boundary by streets. It's more of a descriptive way to define boundaries. What staff has looked at to try to define better boundaries and propose a boundary tonight is this is the catalytic uh, site, the catalytic map here that talks about um, the catalyst sites here. And this one seems to en encompass a lot of the Fairview focus area through these. So staff used this map 
to develop these proposed and potential boundaries here using the catalyst site here. So again, we're sort of talking about Hummer Park to the north along Fairview, extending out to the village boundaries, you know, to the railroad tracks and down towards Second Street, a little further south to include some of the multifamily zoning that's already in on Fairview, and then out to the east, uh, out to the west, my apologies, that way. So we've used the catalytic uh, site map to see these boundaries and set these boundaries up because we think that's a pretty good representation of what the comp plan might be trying to accomplish in 17. Uh, later there'll be an opportunity for us to talk about this map and, and get council ideas on, on this map and if we should move boundaries or if we think those boundaries are good. Switching gears, uh, talking about the land use uh, com comments that were in the comprehensive plan. Uh, again, these are the land use recommendations. Uh, they talk about a mix of uses. Uh, we've got a map here on, on the boards and also been handed out to the folks that are here with us tonight. You can see a lot of different uses here, industrial, commercial, uh, residential, and then obviously the Metro Station and, and Pepperidge Farm out there as well. The comprehensive plan notes that the existing land uses are appropriate. Uh, development, as we all know, has occurred in piecemeal fashion over time. Uh, many buildings are, under, um, are dated. Uh, they have differing in, different heights, different densities. Uh, they failed to potentially maximize the potential given to the train station, the proximity of the train station. Uh, the 2017 conference of plan recommendations are really based on a transit-oriented development type of redevelopment in this area, which is based on a highly functioning and busy commuter rail station. Uh, and those are the 2017 recommendations. When we look at these, this area on a map about the land uses here, we see a central commercial area centered really around Fairview and the railroad tracks. It extends both north of the railroad tracks and south of the railroad tracks. We see a significant industrial areas here uh, moving uh, west on Roger Street between Fairview uh, and, and Prospect, and then again uh, north of the tracks there. And then we see on 2nd Street south of the railroad tracks, extending east of Fairview over all the way to Williams Street. And then surrounding this area, you know, we have a Westmont border along Cumner there, and then around the south, the east, and the north here are all single-family, multifamily, duplex residential uh, uses. When we look at the different types of businesses and land uses in here, it's a, it's a wide range from animal boarding, auto repair, we have the train station, a gas station, offices, restaurants, warehouse, so really a, a big mix of, of uses that we see in this area, as identified not only on this map, but on the map in front of you. Uh, staff put together this map just to better sort of understand what's going on. Uh, we've identified our uh, the proposed boundary on the red dash here, uh, but also wanted to expand this out a little bit for discussion purposes. If the council decides they want to move some boundaries around, so we can talk about those land uses. Again, we see multifamily housing, offices, animal, uh, contractor shops, restaurants, self storage facilities, a variety of uses. You know, residential, commercial, industrial. This is really a, a really a, a soup of mixes in this area here that we see. I, I don't think that's a zoning term, soup of mixes. <laughs> I'll, I'll use them anyways. Uh, so we really, again, going back to the comprehensive plan recommendations, a lot of these recommendations read similar to characteristics of the downtown that we see. A redevelopment oriented towards the street, parking in the rear, promote neighborhood commercial uses, encourage mixed use, transit oriented development. Uh, one of the key things that we saw both in the downtown and here is provide a connection between the downtown and the Fairview Focus area. Uh, the comprehensive plan notes that existing land uses are appropriate, but we should look to update and enhance the bill form and better coordination through uses. And it does note in the same breath that we should communicate with the existing industrial users regarding future needs and potential, to to potential desire to relocate, and that some of the industrial uses along Rogers presents an opportunity to redevelop with more compatible uses. So on one hand, the comp plan says the uses are appropriate. On the other hand, it says potentially more compatible uses. So the, the question that we want to start talking about tonight is really this sort of an or question is, on the one hand, land uses are appropriate. On the other hand, we should talk to the industrial users and see if they want to relocate potentially or present an opportunity for redevelopment um, with more compatible uses. It also should be noted that there's automobile uses in this corridor as well, the gas station, <coughs> Uh, and the auto repair shop. Auto, relaces, auto related uses need to be taken into consideration and should be discussed as, as it relates to these sort of recommendations. If the desired direction is to go to make Fairview more of a downtown area, similar to our downtown, land use policies have been put into place over time, which has seen auto related and auto oriented land uses 
leaving the downtown over a period of time. So two, two of these big clarifications that we're looking to help start conversations tonight about are, you know, do we want to see the industrial uses in this area in the future? Do we want to see our related uses in this area in the future? And what uses does council want to see or the community want to see in this focus area moving forward? That concludes my presentation for this evening. Uh, I was ready with the with this map here, Mayor, to start talking about boundaries, and we can start with that. And Manager Fieldman was going to take some notes on the board for us as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's an open discussion, and it's not going to finish a single thing tonight. But we need to start having the conversation. So I'd, I'd be. You know, I think maybe just uh, anybody wants to start and jump in. I think probably one of the first questions has to do with this, the comp plan's definition of the uses and acceptable uses. Does anybody want to see any changes to that? I would encourage everybody to remember this is a little bit of an exercise in blue sky, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a little more specific, I'm looking for clarifications. Does the council think the concept of existing uses as you see them on the map are appropriate? So as we go to, go to the framework, we write the framework to encourage those to stay for long periods. Or do we think it's really this concept of, you know, maybe some of these industrial uses aren't a long-term future and these concepts. So we're looking for that as well. Yeah. Or are there uses that we think we wish we wanted to encourage that aren't happening now? Mm -hmm. um, that's another, another possible bullet over there. Uh, so anybody want to start in? Greg, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I, I would go down the road of existing uses are not appropriate. Um, I'd love to communicate with some of these industrial users and see if we can put them to another uh, you know, location in our village. Um, and thinking about other uses, I, I think we've got real opportunities here to you know, not just reshape this area, but also create a greater connection to downtown as well, which is why I'm, I'm thrilled to see the, the more expansive uh, definition of the Fairview area uh, and I'd like to see uh, you know whether it's more multifamily or more single-family attached I think you could go either direction along uh, Rogers on the south end um, and I think you could see uh, probably a mix of that uh, as you're south of the tracks there uh, to the east of, uh, of Fairview uh, sort of that blue area uh, I think this we've got real opportunities here and I'd like to see us take advantage of them rather than continue to lock in what we've got. Any uses that come to mind that you wish we had that we don't have? Uh, if you give me a couple of minutes, I could probably come up with 20 or 30, but um, All right. fair uh, enough. No, I, I trying to keep it broad strokes for now. And you, you feel like you kind of like the map that's sitting up here? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I might tweak it here and there, uh, maybe grab a parcel here, grab a parcel there, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to hear any of my colleagues on any of that, but by and large, yeah, I, I like thinking big. Danny? Yeah, I, I agree with Greg. I think that if the goal is to create a connection between the downtown area and the Fairview area, that the industrial use uh, along Rogers um, and eventually second I believe um, is, is not appropriate um, and I also agree with extending it a little bit to the the north I think that's what you were saying on Rogers to create an opportunity for um, like a buffer area between the, the single-family homes is that sure kind of yeah I, I think we could go in that direction absolutely I was the, I was thinking you could also tweak it a little bit on the east end, maybe a little bit on the south, but um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to quibble necessarily over you know, one or two parcels, but I'm the, the bigger the better, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah I agree. Just to follow up on your straight, uh, sorry, Danny. Uh, extend boundaries, Danny had said, extend boundaries to the north. Of Rogers. North of Rogers, got it. Hey, Greg, extend boundaries. Yeah, on the eastern edge, I might bring that down to the, the southern end of, I'm blanking on exactly what street that is. Yeah, was second, it grab second street? Exactly, yes. Okay. Um, and then there might be another parcel or two on the east end of Fairview that I would grab. I'm thinking particularly the, the one basically in that corner right there. Right here? Yep. All right. Uh, 
right. So it was the southeast the corner of Second and Fairview. Mm -hmm. And then when when Commissioner, when you were talking about north side of Rogers, so are we trying to capture this sort of this multifamily zoning that's in that area right now? Yeah, Is that I mean, what you're talking about? yeah. So mm -hmm. is most of it? I, I know there's a lot mixed in there, but then there's some single family mm -hmm. houses. They're labeled on here as in the C. Anywhere yeah. you see brown, that's that's multifamily. That's multifamily. Okay, so mm -hmm. you can do attached. Okay. Yeah, it's mul it's multifamily zoning. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a mix of single family based right, on the map. Yeah, that's why you want to make yeah. sure we're working off of not the zoning so much, but the mm -hmm. these land uses. Yeah. So if I can use you good with yeah. Okay. Any other spots you would draw lines differently? Okay. No, we're not. No, I would agree with Greg. Well, tonight, I mean, so. I would agree with Greg uh, on the east end of of Second Street over there. Oh, this yeah. over this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah, I was just. Uh, I would. I would just default to anything that's currently. Brown, that's zoned uh, multifamily right now. That 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 would be something that, that we would include in this. So just as a starting point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'd definitely be interested in in some conversation about some of the currently current single family uh, adjacencies. Um, certainly uh, along Second Street there, um, but um, but probably. Definitely north of third and west of Florence. Um, uh, just yeah. So I, I you know, more I have to I have to think I haven't haven't can really come to a um, we're we're thinking <coughs> loose right now, right? Yeah. So um, I could see where we could have some conversation where some of these areas that are currently zoned single family would even be somehow um, somehow thought about in this focus area. Mike, you were okay with bumping that line up to the half yeah, block. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm grab. Yeah, grab that. Grab that multifamily. Grab the multifamily north of Burlington Here. Avenue. Grab this. Grab the multifamily east of Blodgett, south of Burlington. Here, right there. Over there. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of the focus area land use recommendations, I was confused by that, and I know we had conversations. I confused by the existing uses are appropriate language uh, in the comp plan. I'm not quite sure what they were. I don't, did anybody else really grasp what they were trying to? I make? just assumed they were trying not to offend yeah. the existing yeah. uses. Yeah. The only That's thing I could think That's of, yeah. and I and That's I, right, I, as well. I get it, but um, but what we're really talking about is the ore. Um, uh, absolutely, you know, the, the highest and best uses of those industrial properties is not how they're being used right now. Mm -hmm. um, and what a tremendous opportunity. Um, the connection, as Commissioner Jose mentioned, to the downtown um, is, is, I almost think it's just essential um, to really making this a success. Um, so those, those visual cues that we're going to that we're hopefully going to get through uh, pedestrian right away and and um, you know as as was mentioned in the in the, in the comp language um, uh, also um, well I don't want to I'm not going to go off track so I'm not going to do that that's what I was asked to talk to that's what I'm thinking that's it so no automobile oriented uses I'm going to know on that I really think our current downtown and how what we're doing there serves as a great model of success for uh, how we can how we can work this <laughs> yeah um, I am in agreement with Commissioner Davenport in terms of the you know including some of those multifamily areas as well um, and I also agree that I don't I'm not interested in keeping existing uses as appropriate um, I think we have a much better opportunity, especially because this is such a heavily transit oriented area. Again, as somebody who lives off of Fairview and who now never uses the Fairview train station mm -hmm. anymore because Metro has reduced service so much. Um, is it a chicken or the egg? I don't know. Is it because not as many people were using Fairview? Is it because, you know, they're just trying to reduce service? We're probably not going to get a great answer on that one, but it certainly doesn't help that, yeah, we, we don't have a lot of, of destinations along, along Fairview. Um, 
So I am much more in favor of, of again, that connection to downtown that we talked about and potentially getting more, whether it be real retail, commercial, service type industries that, you know, we would be wanting to attract more in our downtown and, and kind of move it move it that way in Fairview. You know, we, we have some great industrial areas and, you know, we certainly have some, I'm sure, some occupancy in some of those. And, and I don't know that butting up right against one, a really major commuter rail is, you know, and, and two against a lot of these single family and multifamily units is is the best use you know a lot of folks again probably moved into some of these because let's face it living off of the fairview area is cheaper than living off of the main street area that's one reason that i live off of the fairview area not the main street area um and so you know really having that access to transit and having access to um you know a workplace would be a huge benefit to a lot of these multi multi-family units um a more affordable entry point and so if we can do anything to kind of boost the use of the Fairview station and, and that economy in that area, I think it would be a huge benefit to all of our residents. Leslie, you were talking about a list of uses, retail, mm -hmm. Does that also include in your mind restaurants, mm -hmm. group pubs, yeah. those types of facilities? Yeah. Yeah, I think generally agree. I think extending it into some of the multifamily uh, parcels makes makes sense. Um, is Prospect far enough east to connect to downtown? Do we feel that's far enough east? So Stan was correct me. Doesn't yeah. when you get to Prospect, doesn't that start the downtown? DT starts. I believe so. I believe DT starts right right there because the last parcel is downtown transition right here, mm -hmm. and then we move right into downtown transition and then downtown right, business right, right there. Um, but, but keep, what no, do you but see I just want to make I just want to make sure if we're going as far as prospect that we're we're actually going to connect to that next place that we want to. We talked about downtown, and if that's zoned for transitional, then that's that's good enough mm -hmm. for me. So that's uh, mm -hmm. a compatibility when, when you go from whatever we end up deciding what right. the zoning name is right. to the concepts in the DT. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Um, I think I'm struggling a little bit. I think, yeah, I think I'd like to see uh, some of the things that are here, restaurants and the idea of, you know, in my mind, that idea of having a, be a little more, um, a little different than downtown in terms of like, Entertainment. I know we've talked in the past. There was like a theater troupe that was mm -hmm. looking to get in there. And <clears throat> to me, I, I view it a li just a little differently that way. I wouldn't want to emulate downtown. I would want to make it sort of its own thing. Um, so I, I, I don't know if we're getting to that discussion now or not. But we, I assume we will. But what, what does the Fairview area mean to us from in terms of like? When you get there, what does it feel like? What does it have? What's the vibrancy? That type of stuff, I think. I, I think as it's contemplated now, yeah. there is this idea of a wider use of mixes. Okay. Right? So, yeah. wider than downtown. But as we go, we'd love to hear your opinion too. Yeah. Is it so wide that it captures existing yeah. industrial uses? Yeah, I, don't, I agree with everyone so far. I don't think the existing uses, um, j all, some are, but generally there are some there that are not appropriate and I think I would yeah the latter of them, communicate with existing users and um, look for ways to redevelop that, right, gotcha on that category. I just I'll go back to what you probably hear me I, I feel like there's a, a vision that we need to work backwards from mm -hmm. before we start reaching out to yes right like I want to want to see it yeah. and then we can yeah. kind of work back there but I'm sure that's kind of can I, um, and no auto just no auto clarification yeah you can put me down yeah. on no auto. yeah same I think we've got a few on Ogden that <laughs> I just um, I just I just wanted to, 
I agree yeah. with everything you've just said, and um, uh, my suggestion of using our downtown as a model wasn't that I was yeah. hoping to duplicate it. Right. In fact, I mean, part of the energy around this, I, you know, I think about like, uh, like uh, maybe some of what's been done over in Seven Bridges, and mm -hmm. and 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 what you see, uh, you know, near and around vibrant college campuses, mm -hmm. and and just you know really interesting eclectic mixes yeah. of mm -hmm. uses and multi-use um, uh, applications. So uh, it's it's really exciting and nailing down that vision I yeah. think is important. Um, multi-uses within buildings and multi-uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes, thank you. All right, my turn to jump in. Um, on this boundary thing, I I don't disagree with anything that's been said, except I think I would add that maybe I wasn't hearing it right, but I wouldn't limit any of this to multifamily. So, for instance, sure. along Second Street, I pick up those single-family or whatever those are. Yeah, we are coming up this way. Right? I'm, I'm on that too. You know, on on um, mm -hmm. everybody. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. Rogers, yeah. I pick up the whole north side all the yeah. way down to Prospect. Yeah. Yep. The dark brown and yeah. light brown there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So mid block, yeah. right? Yeah, right. North side of Rogers, and then everybody said this mm -hmm. too. All the way down, you finish mm -hmm. this block. Out. the block, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then I, I think I'd do a similar thing on Burlington. With these. Um, you know, I might, I might, I think I'd try and square some stuff off. So I don't know if you pick up that alley and go east, um, but we're trying to create an environment that we think. You know, yeah. this is if you had mm -hmm. this is yeah. that way and this way. Uh, next one up, next alley up, right here. Yeah, it, one of the challenges we always have is how big of spaces are out there. We're not going to necessarily be putting the spaces together, mm -hmm. um, but telling the world that's the picture we have, I think, is is okay. Mm -hmm. um, same thing on, on Maple. You know, right now there's that little. Corner right there, Stan. Yeah, right pick that up as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna s I'm gonna write down a general expansion in the northeast part. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I think I'd take what's that? What is that street that's covered? Not Florence. Next one west. This one is yeah. Wil Wilcox. Yeah. I'd take Wilcox all the way up to Maple. Okay. And then I'd go down and pick up that brown triangle. Right here. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Um, just the point being that this is going to lead to visions, as Chris was talking about. It may lead to public decisions about infrastructure and investments and financing tools and things like that. And and I want to have bigger spaces available. We know from our experience downtown, where, where the village bought a bunch of property and put it together. We know from our experience along Acton Avenue. The slot sizes is, can be a real Problem. challenge. Sure. Um, what what property is a village on right now? Hmm. So I think we go to land use. So we go to X, which is the yep. train station train station parking lot, yep. which wraps around here. That's right away. A lot of this in, in the right away here is all right the blue salt BNSF right away. Okay. Yeah, and I just want to jump in there. Sorry, could you show that again? What? So the village owns this this parcel here, which is the Fairview it's train station, which marks X. X. Yep. Mm -hmm. X over there, and then and then parcels here. Yep. But a lot of this in the middle, where it's not parceled, is, is railroad right away. It's actually railroad right away. Right. Yep. And, and, and mm -hmm. a lot of people make the leap that it's got to be village owned and village controlled because we have parking on it. But it is actually oh. not. We have parking agreements on all these. Yep. And um, <laughs> yeah. so it's not village owned and controlled. Uh, we do have a good history of working with the BNSF and, and they're the underlying landowners, but that is not in our direct control. We'd have to engage with them if we were to start talking about what to put on there, what to mm -hmm. do it, and they would ultimately be up to them. Ask your question. Uh, I'll just, I'm going to make our staff cringe first. Oh. Dave <laughs> talks about our good working relationship. I suppose at some level we do. I'll just remind everybody about trees, and then we can talk, a thing, talk about things like fencing and crossings. We talk about shelters that got half ass done. There's challenges there. There's a level, of, there's a service level threshold that they have expectations on that likely doesn't meet ours. Mm -hmm. So just know that's a, mm -hmm. 
it's a tough okay. gap to overcome. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask if anyone had any <coughs> feelings about those extra large lots along Grand Avenue. In this area down mm -hmm. here? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's all That's all single family housing right now. Mm -hmm. Down through here on both sides of Grand. Mm -hmm. And then this is a larger multifamily right. complex here mm -hmm. and a couple of smaller multifamily in that location there. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm just looking at in terms of opportunity. What you know, when I was looking at this the other day, uh, you know, yeah, it's a those are large parcels. Mm -hmm. So obviously, more can be done uh, with those than in the future mm -hmm. if somebody were to so choose to do so. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the village owned property. The reason I asked that question is because and this is probably beyond tonight's scope, but if we talk about what we think we might want to have for uses. I agree with everybody's opinions on the uses as it's put on this board. But if you're trying to encourage other uses, you may have to have, I'm going to just use the term infrastructure. So, for instance, if you said you wanted to create, you wanted to create some sort of a performance environment, I think mm -hmm. been, people have tossed that around in casual conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, village parking deck is pretty supportive of that, right? Mm -hmm. you know, people lost their minds at one time when we started yeah, having parking deck. So it, but it's these kinds of conversations that we need to have, and and I'll remind everybody too that when we we're sitting here drawing this map with a magic wand, but when the village did this downtown, which I think. Mo First of all, everybody that's moved into town in the last 20 years has experienced just that and probably had played a role in them making that choice. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I think most people, but for some occasional complaints about parking, are generally like, what's going on? But the village bought property, assembled property, and then at least in theory, undersold property to help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. So as we draw maps and talk about uses and look at things, just Remember, it's more than just sort of what do we theoretically want to consider an area right this moment. Right? There's potential choices we would make driven by these decisions about uses or goals or boundaries mm -hmm. that would have radical impacts way beyond us just kind of daydreaming. Mm -hmm. um, the the uses ends to help me <clears throat> when we. <laughs> I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. When we went through downtown and we redid a bunch of rezoning, it might not even been with that. It might have been in a, a rewrite. But we went mm -hmm. through and changed and added and expanded some use definitions. There were things like artisan manufacturing. I don't remember what it was, right? That was the 17. 17. Is that right? 17? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Might be forgiven for not remembering all the details. Um, Right now, are those tied to DT and DB definitions? Yes. Okay. They are allowed in those zoning districts. Okay. So as it relates to this conversation, I want to be thoughtful about the use of the word industrial. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't think we want what the classic definition of industrial is, mm -hmm. but okay. I suspect there are manufacturing-ish things that we probably do want. Yeah, yeah, that's a reasonable point. I think that's. Right. Um, I'm thinking Goldfinger, things yeah. like that, fit sure. because of yeah. it's quasi industrial, mm -hmm. right. and that's exactly the kind of thing I'd like to see mm -hmm. stay and grow yeah. and you know, multiply. Okay. Artisan industrial, okay. Small scale mm -hmm. maker spaces, okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Heavy industrial, not so. No. Yeah. Right. Right. Over here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Bob, I'll put you in. Great clarification. This way? Yeah, and like one of the uses out here is warehousing. I don't have any interest in that. Right. As a, as a related ex example. Did you say self storage and warehousing? So yeah. too, that's kind of, we think of those as industrial ish. Yeah, right. 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 Okay. That's why I brought it up because that's a, that's a fuzzy word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other thoughts? Part of this exercise is we get to hear each other talk and then think about it for a while. Right. What other information are you hoping to get out of us tonight? I think we heard from everybody, perhaps on, maybe not everybody on the honor related, but we got a lot of... Uh, put me as a no. Okay. 
stand, Jason? I, th I think we have a lot that we think some of the existing uses are appropriate, mm -hmm. um, but then some of the, like, to the last point, some of the more industrial, heavy manufacturing industries might not be appropriate in that area. Um, looking to emulate, I understand I'm looking to emulate downtown, but maybe not copy downtown. Maybe have a more, I think maybe you said more of a, I don't know, the university or more vibrancy, a different type of vibe in that area than downtown, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I've, I've got, I think what I've gotten, I think I've heard a lot of on the automobile use, I think we're pretty clear on that one so far. So, I think we got some work to do on the boundaries to come mm -hmm. back to you next time. And I think we can sort of put together an interpretation of sort of a modified 2017 comp plan recommendations based on what we're hearing. So, maybe we can get that for you next time. A little more clarity, sort of uh, not go all the way back to the drawing board, but just craft mm -hmm. what we heard tonight yep. in terms of land use recommendations and come back with some adjusted boundaries for council review. So, this process is continuing and ongoing and a lot longer than one more meeting, right? Just so we're all mm -hmm. clear on that. Yeah, I guess um, maybe just when we'll get the opportunity to discuss what the vision looks like. I don't know if that's something that I would like to make sure we have an opportunity sooner rather than later to have a discussion like this about ideas that we have or comparables. You mentioned sort of the university feel, but I feel like we need to get a little more s some examples or specific around that. And as you know, maybe we talk to even folks like the EDC and what kinds of things are spurring economic growth and value and sure that type of thing I, I just I feel we can this is just my brain we can list a bunch of uses but I want to I feel like we're, we want to have a little more guidance around what which ones we maybe want more than others right and then I guess maybe a question <clears throat> based on that would we not then pe peel off some uses that we like we're trying to funnel certain businesses or attractions so then wouldn't we then go back and say okay well and I'm not going to pick one but this type of use doesn't really fit so while it at one time did we're just industrial is an obvious one to me but there may be ones that are like well, we'd rather this than that so yeah. we have to make mm -hmm. decisions around around that so the good news is what we're hearing here is now that the transition from sort of just this yep. to the that's the zoning framework yeah. that's exactly where we're going okay. next when Stan said we'll go to the zoning okay. framework so it's not jumping right to an ordinance yep detail yep. detail detail oh, got it. vision kind of what categories yep. fit kind of yeah okay. so I think that's where we're headed Chris okay I think Chris, it was something interesting there EDC input yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it would be helpful to me maybe Every, I don't know if this was helpful to everybody, but I would love it if you have, any of us has a vision, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Write a little narrative. Yeah. Shoot it over to Enzo, and let's package it up, and let's hear it. Because those are, you know, you start typing, and you leave it alone for a while, and you come back a couple of days later. But I, I would get a lot of value out of that that would help the next meeting, I think. Yeah. And a good place to start is read the opening paragraphs of the current comp plan, because that's sort of, I think, what yeah. Chris saying vision statement, that's, I think, what's, what's yeah. Yeah, yeah. mark that up if you think it's yeah, not sure. quite off. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little homework like that would benefit all of us, and we can just funnel it through it. We have some folks that were, uh, Real troopers, <laughs> real troopers tonight. So let's yeah. uh, let's hear from them. Well, right now I feel like I'm in the middle of a big board game. <laughs> Is most of this property already in use? Either that, how much of this is residential? I mean, is there some guy sitting at home watching TV tonight, not knowing your home is not in your your vision? Possibly. Yep. Just how do you how do you folks attend? To, are you going to knock on doors and say we want your property and you got to go? Oh. Seriously, no. It, it, it's a way slower, longer. This is not this is not a fiat kind of thing. If this was all open land and yeah. ready, I'm all for it. Sure, I, I'd love to see another part. As long as we don't have another Ogden Avenue being bought and put it in here. 
but I'm thinking these are all people who have built their businesses, their homes, and you're all talking like it's like, well, I'll put this here and I'll put this here and I'll trade you this for that. Yeah, I, my advice for these people would get a lawyer. Frankly, what uh, this is about. this is exactly what the exercise is, is is looking at what what might you think if you had a blank slate of paper what might this look like 25 years from now okay because yes. i would say you're going to have some fights on your hands it could well be there were some downtown as well yeah um, there were there were challenges and interactions that weren't super pleasant back in 98 there were similar ones when we rezoned in 17. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this, if it's in Delmar, it's not pretty, and I mean, it could be re reused, but yep. I just, it's almost like we're being very flippant about, well, we'll take this, and we need this, and let's turn this into that and that. I thought, I would so really you, fight you Are you that. familiar with the future land use map? No. Spend a little time with that. What we also do as part of our planning process is we develop what's called a future land use map. And it is a very similar exercise. It says, what might you wish was going on in this parcel and that parcel? It doesn't compel the village to try and force somebody into something different. So we're not planning on any dominant domain? Uh, domain? It's a million miles from now. I hope so. Because if I were any of these people, I would not be happy with it. If, I, if you gave me a good price for my property, I could be out in a week. Yes. Uh, but no, I'm just I'm just curious. I you know if it's all blank, I'd say go for it. No, no, let's start tomorrow. Well, that's the question. Yeah, yeah. but we're talking about people here, you know, and their property, yep. and it's just absolutely you can't be that light about it, you know. But no, I just I think that's wrong. You ask me. Yep, that's what we want. So just to be clear from the staff perspective, this is a zoning exercise that we're on the front end. A lot of the other stuff we're talking about is in the other categories of this project, mm -hmm. which is facilitation and right. financial policies mm -hmm. and you know that kind of stuff. So start with the zoning, and then usually it takes a while to get to those other approaches. Right. So I've got a uh, I'm Miles Boone. Um, I've got a uh, like so I own a building on Fairview. Um, like how real is this? You know, if it's a exercise. Like how, you know, should I put money into my building or should I just hunker down and get the duct tape out and keep it until you guys are like, we're tearing this down? We're not tearing anything down. This project, what we're doing right now is very much what was done downtown, which back in, help me with the dates, mid-90s? 2017. Well, that was a rezoning, but yeah, mid-90s. Right? Mid-90s. 97, 98. Yeah. 97, 98. A bunch of people did this exact same exercise, and you might remember what downtown looked like then. Sure, and, and things got torn down. Yeah, but a village didn't just come in and start knocking stuff down. It was a, no, it was an no, evolutionary no. process, some of which was done by people doing it on their own, some of which was done by the village purchasing stuff. There was a whole row of things over the better part of 15 years that sure. caused that. There's nothing about this should direct any particular existing landowner to make choices. This is this is the village council thinking. What do we wish? If, if everything was on the table, this would look like in 20 years. Okay, that's the kind of exercise. Okay, and because in in 2017 we had just bought the building, and then there was a I was in this very room with renderings of what my block would look like. Sure. You probably there's somewhere around mm -hmm. here, right? Sure, you know. Sure. Um, uh, comp plan? And so that's a very different. You know, that was like that was what they wished and now all of a sudden we're back to it is that like still something that you wish would happen there is that what that's saying is that what we're kind of like we're asking that question all right yeah that's what we're doing it's asking that question but i'll remind everybody back uh, in downtown there were a couple of such plans um you know if you go through this exercise then you have to think about okay what does that look like right? sure we sit here and we draw lines and we talk about uses and what might that look like and so you probably, yeah, Lakota, I think was the name of the, the big one that, that hung around here for a while. Um, and that's exactly what it was. It was renderings, it was streetscapes, it was what might this look like. Right. That isn't exactly what happened. It's not ever going to be. Okay. But it would be a logical next step if we thought we all had some clarity on direction and probably you'd be open for And getting a, like your vision and, and yeah, all exactly. that, if that fit, then mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. And then, then we get into zoning and how do we make that happen. Mm -hmm. So we're a ways off for any real, yes. real change. Yeah. Right. Can I also just add that the comprehensive plan was 
visionary, but it, there was not a lot of action behind it as we see. Yeah. This council has said this is an important part of what we want to see. We talked about extension of downtown. What, let's get to what the vision is. And so they've already said this is very early on, but I think this is the first step in like trying to enact some of that rather than wishing it. Right. Yeah. And no disrespect to the comp plan, it was well thought out. I think they had some, still sure. have some good ideas, but well, it was very broad in scope. Broad in right? scope, right? And we're, I think we're trying to see if we can narrow it down. And, and these are some things you're picking out yeah, of that. And like, exactly. Let's yeah. Try to make this happen. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not just saying this because he's in the room. I think Goldfinger is a, has been a catalyst of that, planted right in the middle between downtown and Fairview, and I think has given some of us an idea of what more we want. So I think that's important to recognize. Does that help, Miles? Does that help? Yeah, it helps yeah. a lot. Good. Yeah, I just want, I mean, you're talking about, like I said, again, oh. having maybe revive or <coughs> another downtown or a supplement to that, you know, in the future. But then you're, you're going to end up with means. We're, we're really limited where we are now, our core mm -hmm. space. I mean, we're, we're pretty well built out and, you know, traffic stacking up in every direction. But if you end up here, then you're going to end up with two downtowns, wouldn't you? Which town, which, which town did you want to go to, one or two? I don't know. Would that Im impact the first, our original one as far as drawing business away from it? Depending on what you put in there. But to have them so far apart, I, I'm trying to think of other towns that maybe have something similar to that, and I can't really think of one. LaGrange might be one. Hmm? LaGrange would probably be a good one. Is it? No. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, well, I'm not really Stone familiar with it. Right. Stone Avenue yeah. versus LaGrange Road. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, for what somebody mentioned, well, wider. Boy, amen to that. If, you, if it ever comes to that, make that Main Street the wider. Yeah. And again, like I said, we don't need another Ogden Avenue and 47 car dealers. Right. So, mm -hmm. make a note in the future. Um, well, can I say I own several properties on this, and the one thing that just concerned me a little bit is this larger and exaggerated setbacks, you know, which was basically my property, and it, it does worry me when we. Uh, I had the similar thing happen with the downtown transition, where all my property got set back and and uh, subject to different uh, uh, zoning, and I would like to. I, I would like to, uh, you know, that, especially that piece on Fairview because I own from the Speedway to the to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm all for, you know, um, being part of a plan, but that does limit uh, a lot mm -hmm. of what you can do with that property. And then the other part too, which I think uh, Leslie alluded to, which is. I used to go downtown and, and um, you know, certainly Fairview is not, from a, a commuter standpoint, um, you don't go there because the schedule doesn't go there and the downtown commuting is not what it used to be and it's a whole different feel and I, if I were Metra, I might, that might be one that I would abandon mm -hmm. in favor of, you know, Belmont, which you can park up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, in Maine. So, I would just be cautious too because I, I, I have operated a lot of businesses in downtown Grange, Elmer, Stoke Park, and all sorts. But um, when you get these sort of these tertiary downtowns, the traffic counts are light and are tough to tenant because you don't mm -hmm. get the activity that you, you want the activity. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the activity, it's hard to, to gain that. And I understand that's why you have a comprehensive plan and you, mm -hmm. you move forward with that, but you just gotta be a little bit careful because you can go a block in some downtowns and it's, it, it just changes the whole okay. dynamic mm -hmm. of uh, who you can attract from a business. Right. And it's like the A tenants and then the, the, you know, the B tenants. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, it's just something to consider. But my biggest thing just in zoning would be in the first thing is I would hate to to be subject to a big setback and um, can, we, can we just hear Stan talk a little bit about that uh, what yeah. the comp plan vision is for that currently yeah so the comp plan vision really talks about you know orienting things towards, towards the street makes use transit to orient development and if we're using sort of downtown as a, as a guide if this were to become a district 
or on Fairview and a connection to, to downtown, then maybe it does have more buildings right at property lines. You know, it might, be, it might be more of that, especially on Fairview, where we're going to bring it closer, you know, on-street parking, more of a walkable area that way. You know, and then as we transition out, maybe that becomes a little bit less, but I think right in that core area, we're talking about trying to keep buildings pretty close to the street right so, away. So mm -hmm. less of a requirement. Less of a requirement yes. setback, yeah. Not more. Yeah, but, I mean, this says exaggerated setbacks. Uh, right on my wrong. property, there's a big arrow there. And it, Gotcha. And, and it says, yes, larger and exaggerated setbacks. We'll take a look at that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks for that. I got a little excited. Uh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> and, on, and on that plan, too, in the comp plan, I think they had everything redeveloped. Okay. And it was a more of a, again, a blank slate on the, on the piece of land, what could potentially happen out there. But that's exactly, Chris, that's exactly why we want you to be part of these conversations. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody that what is going to come out of this is going to be exactly what they want right but we're the process is going to take us down that road of having those conversations about do we want stuff on the street or off the street and what's that really mean for parking what's that really mean for existing uses what's that really mean for future uses so that kind of input is important to this conversation is don't don't leave it yeah. Robin um, a question and then a comment um, can you explain where Whittier School is in relation to this? Uh, right about here. So. Okay. It's so just right in that area. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Close, but not adjacent. It's between yeah. Hill and, mm -hmm. and uh, Lodge and, uh, yeah. right there. Okay. Green and Lodge. Okay. Fun to get a sense of that because I would want to get to really close in on the school, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I can't let an opportunity to go by um, as far as this. Our Civic Center building, and you know that I and several others talked about affordable housing there, and several council members mentioned that Fairview would be the place for affordable housing. So have a good memory for these things. And it's never too er early to remind you of that. There's one um, Pepperidge, Pepperidge Farm, that lower right corner A, that Section right A housing. Mm -hmm. um, we, would, we would not only perhaps not have be adding any affordable housing but could be losing affordable housing and I think that I anyway and several people I know would like us to be an inclusive community and it would be nice if the people that work in a lot of the businesses say on Main Street or on Ogden or on 7th could afford to also live in Downers Grove so um, I know the RFP has the option in the Civic Center project for affordable housing and I have a lot of faith that anyone will take you up on that so I'm, I'm going to have a long memory on promoting that for the Fairview project and making sure that especially if we remove some low-income housing that we have affordable housing there um, that we not only replace what we remove but that we add we need more inclusive housing in and Thanks. Sure. Uh, so I kind of assume there it looks like Fairview would become your main drag then through through your new core if, if it goes that way. As far as commercial or businesses, wouldn't that be your main street? Like Main Street is for us now. Yeah, I suppose. Sure. It looks like yeah, because it's a straight probably straight shot through there. But is it, isn't that all the way down? Isn't that mostly one lane? All of, I mean, one lane for each direction. There's no, there's no width if you wanted to expand that into more of a main drag either, is there? Fair to the fire. It's two lanes. Is it? Um, both two and both. Is it? There is parking on one parking. side, which, but if there's no parking there. Yeah. So you'd want to allow for that in case you, you want a wider main street. From That's from First about thing? second to Maple. Yeah. It's from like second to Maple. It's it's way. Second. And next thing I would do is real right quick, scribble a parking deck somewhere in there. Plan on it. Street widths to this area are part of the Fairview Streetscape Plan, which will be part of the comprehensive six projects that are coming up probably early in next year. Going to need a few dividers for that plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. Anybody else? Go ahead, Tom. Tom Beckman, um, I open Goldfinger. Uh, <clears throat> obviously not an area that 
attracted me initially. Um, the reason I chose the building where we are is because I used to walk with my wife, walk our dog down Rogers. We used to live downtown down Nurse. Uh, but it all started with a vision of this is what it looks like today, but what could it look like a year from now? Um, and it didn't. It wasn't just limited to where we built out. I mean, I've had visions for all the way to where Rogers and, and Maple cross, and I have a lot of things that I would like to do in that area. But what we did with our building, it was a really rundown, dilapidated building. We put quite a bit of money into it. Um, and the building adjacent to us, we have interest in, that requires quite a bit of money into it. I have more of a philosophy that before we think about tearing things down, are there certain things that we could just kind of improve? Um, you talk about the university vibe, I think one of the kind of characteristics of a university vibe is repurposing former industrial buildings, sure. uh, mm -hmm. making them a lot more attractive. So uh, I really like the idea of making this area artsy, artisanal craft like what we do. Um, but I hope we don't, you know, just bulldoze everything and think, okay, what exists there and what can we build around? That's a, I'm going to add to that just for one. When we came and we took over the, the, the manufacturing plant, which was our office, and actually it was all legal storage and all that, it was a environmental um, challenge, and we spent quite a bit remediating it from full manufacturing. And then Doggy Depot came in, and we had offices up and light manufacturing, and then, you know, extended down. And, and it is kind of that cool re repurpose not that it's the sexiest thing but it's you know there is a lot of neat things that can come out of reusing a, a building and uh, so I'll just echo that <laughs> that's what I do for a living so yeah. I'm right there with you yeah. <laughs> okay anybody on the council got anything else to add for tonight Hey, thanks for you guys, uh, the audience that stayed with us till 11 o'clock. Thank you. And uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>